My name is uh, Christian Brinker and I'm from Evola. We are a cloud uh, company helping uh, other companies to commit to the cloud to transform the IT technologies. And by that, we are, I'm uh, here as a software developer at, at Evola. Um, and we uh, developed several service brokers and made an open source framework out of it. And, help it, and now we're helping to uh, others adopt to, the, uh, to getting to started developing their own service brokers. One question ahead, has someone in here already implemented service brokers for Cloud Foundry already? One hand up, okay. Um, okay, then get to started. What is the task here about? Um, one step ahead. We uh, wanted to also, as the last session in here, wanted to do a two hours deep dive into the code, helping you to program a, a service broker on your own. Um, unfortunately, we got 30 minutes, so we have to speed up a little bit. Um, okay, what's the task? Uh, you have your app Cloud Foundry, you have your application, which you want to run there, but you need additional services like databases or something, or uh, message queues, or whatever. So you have to do, have there some, uh, some service uh, at some service source. One possibility maybe is uh, you have a web app and you want to go to your MySQL server, which is hosted on your iOS stack, like OpenStack or something. But how do you get there? How do you get this one running fast, easy as your apps, which you can deploy fast with your CF push and you have it? So the trick in Cloud Foundry is you have some co thing called service broker. Your Cloud Foundry installation has a is using the cloud controller to manage all the things. Know someone who can get you some service. And this is called the service broker, which knows on some back end to get a service. And so if you get there, you say, hey, Cloud Foundry, get me some service. He says, hey, service broker, get me the service. And the service is deployed. And the service broker tells the cloud controller, hey, that's the way you can connect your apps to. And then gets the, the credentials to your application, which is then able to access the service. What types of service are there? You have managed service by service broker on the back end. You can also use a uh, user-provided service, so your app can be said, hey, it's a service for your other apps. But that's not part of, of the thing, because we do, you do not need a service broker for it, of this session. You have bindable servi services, which can be connected to your apps. You have non-bindable services, which are not connected to your app, but you can connect them to your, themselves to it. Um, you have route services, which are intercepting the, uh, the messages sent to your apps and get back. And the syslog drain services, which can uh, collect the, uh, the syslog of your applications. Um, for the route services, there's another talk in this conference I've seen in the program. So we don't uh, match it here. So let's look a little bit deeper. If you have your Cloud Foundry installation, you can create a service broker um, by, and telling the cloud controller how to access the service broker where it finds. Then the, uh, the, the cloud controller fetches a catalog of services presented by the service broker. And if you call the marketplace in, uh, in Cloud Foundry, you get this information from here. Afterwards, if you say, hey, I want some instance of this service, the cloud controller says the service broker provision me one instance. My, for example, the MySQL database is created, and then <coughs> afterwards, if the service, uh, if you want to bind your application against the cloud control uh, against the service instance, he creates a binding, and that means here are credentials gathered and back to the application. The same, deleting the binding or deleting the instance removes the instance. So we have to do some REST calls, REST interface implementation, many big stuff, of course, having to include the, the complete thing. But ha, 
we do not have to re-implement all the things because uh, we've made a framework out of it. So if you build this up a service broker, you can get easily all the applicational things together. We made it open source, available on GitHub. The service brokers are deployed uh, uh, as made as Spring Boot applications. If you stay at the last uh, session here, you've heard a little bit about Spring Boot and building Spring Boot applications, which makes things easy, also including here Spring Cloud as with Spring Cloud configuration and uh, making build man management with Maven and we are happy for your contribution to it. Um, if you want to add code, new service brokers, scripts for deployment of something, document adding by at the documentation, we're happy for your aid. And let's l l get a little bit look a deeper look into it. Um, if you have your service broker, you have to deal with uh, something with the catalogs. Yeah, you have to tell uh, tell the. Uh, the cloud controller, how to access services, which services are there, what is interesting at that for the marketplace. That's done by the catalog controller. You have service instance controller doing the sa things about the, uh, the instance creation using deployment service. And here, some kind of platform service which uses the, uh, the, de the, uh, exec uh, the deployment on some platform or something. For example, if you have, want to do our uh, uh, example from uh, before, with the MySQL database deployed to your OpenStack, we, ha we have to create um, some custom code for deploying MySQL and some code for doing it on OpenStack. Um, if you he see here, the red things and the blue things, the blue things are co uh, covered by, the, uh, by, the, uh, by our framework. The light red things are also implemented, also open source, maybe used by you, si by you, but maybe exchanged. We see that later on. And the red ones are the service-specific code. So we can reduce, when, uh, pro uh, when uh, developing a new service broker, we can reduce the amount of code which we have to do to the one specific to our service. So instead of really implementing the, uh, all, all of the, the code used to, to uh, handle with Cloud Foundry and so on, we can shift that away and say, we only want to use when, uh, the make the new code to adopt to the new service, deploy for the new service broker. So we have only to deal with MySQL, not with Cloud Foundry. Also, when you have for the binding, we have the same thing here with some custom code for the binding service and the rest is done away. Because we developed it as microservices, no state is in the application, so we have some persistent service which persists the, uh, persists the state to some database. For example, here Redis. So how to define the services for uh, making that more easily we added uh, some kind of uh, definition YAML file, the service definition YAML file, where you can define the service which is presented in the catalog and the marketplace to the customer of the Cloud Foundry uh, side. So for example, you have, can define an ID for the service, a name for the service, a description shown in the marketplace, and bindable, uh, if it's bindable or not, and several service plans for each of the services. We also provide some metadata field which can be accessed and so you can easily add and remove new services based on that. For example, here in the metadata uh, part, you can define templates for use by heat deployment of new uh, virtual machines on OpenStack and exchange the templates easily by changing the property and redeploying the application or something. Also, the configuration of the application can be made, uh, because it's Spring Boot, very easily by your application YAML file. You can define several profiles for different, um, kinds, of, uh, different kinds of deployments. Can uh, edit, for example, the persistence part of something easily. And what the best thing is, it's Spring Boot. It can use Spring Cloud. So you can also shift this to your Spring Cloud config server 
uh, getting the, informa the config information from a remote site, like a Git repository or something. So that's part of the, the, uh, uh, the talk. Let's go to the code, which is more interesting maybe. So I don't think you can read it, because so I make it a little bit more bigger. Is it possible for you to read that up there? Good. We m because implementing how to get into s uh, the, the structure is, is a, bit, a little bit uh, maybe uh, <coughs> not so easy, we made an example project on a Git repository, uh, ser uh, example service broker. If you look at it, we have here some small code we have to uh, only there and a POM file. If you look at the, uh, the POM file we see, There's not much in it because we have a, a predefined parent and we can uh, add it only core dependencies for the service broker, which is the blue part from our graphic uh, we've seen. We have added the, the Docker um, usage, the OpenStack usage, and the Redis service. So this is the, the light red part from our uh, pr uh, graphic. So the blue part is there the high light red parts are there, so we only need some service-specific code. Let's look. We have here an application. Okay, Spring Boot application, nothing interesting in here. Hmm. We have a service, uh, example service binding service. This is the interesting part, because for binding a service, we only need mm, create a, creating credentials here, so what is put back to the user, <coughs> like a URI with credentials in it, and how do we delete a binding? So we have only to define that, and also custom property handling, like uh, service-specific property handling, getting down from, from, uh, uh, from a config files to the code. That's all you need for a, a slide startup. Additionally, you need some Temp a heat template to deployment. If we look yet, yet to, the, to the more uh, specific part, like, hmm, let's do a service broker in CouchDB. We have to, look, we have to uh, rename some things from the code. We made a, uh, because we have short time, we made a list on it, put it on uh, our repository for the coding session. We've shown the I sh will show the link later on. And what have we, have we got there? Hey, we designed, said, ah, credentials. What do we do? We have admin users for this database. Um, for easy use here in the, in the, uh, for the slides we use, uh, the demonstration, we use the service instance ID. And uh, we want to do a database added in the um, Cloud Foundry installation, and uh, in the CouchDB installation. Um, which is named after the binding ID and also user with password for it. And afterwards, we get back to the user for the app to Cloud Foundry a URI which has user password and the host IP and the host port of the deployed inst uh, CloudGB instance. If we delete a binding, we have the same credentials and let's look what code we have to add. So, if you go to the final step, here you see the, the projects we added with our <coughs> Maven dependencies. So we added the core function, the persistence, and uh, some model-specific parts from the core. But the interesting part is, what do we have to add? When we start, we add only some uh, some uh, CouchDB uh, framework to access the uh, CouchDB server for administrative usage. We added some boilerplate code for usage of uh, the user and database management of the CouchDB, which is not part of the, the framework for adding users, adding administrative usage, adding roles and such things. But that's service-specific code. No code use it, used for the, the deployment of, with Cloud Foundry. So what do we add it for the service uh, broker's part? 
we said, oh, there's a problem with, with, uh, with CouchDB and uh, using the ID. So we added some uh, lower case letters, but the service specific, we said it, we wanted to, to do, uh, we used the code from our, fra uh, from our uh, CouchDB framework to add the user if we bind it to the service, create a database, add the user to the database, back to credentials. And we g if you go wa wider, we could delete the user from the database, maybe uh, delete the database too, but that's all. The rest is done by the framework. What do we have to add then to get the new service broker? We have to add deployment scripts like a heat template for deploying to heat. So it's like here, some script part deploying all the things you need to deploy a CouchDB to uh, a new CouchDB instance to uh, to OpenStack or uh, the Docker commands to run it on there. You will get information here from our uh, service broker uh, property files in here shifted to us. We can also manipulate them using the custom properties handler. And if we look at the application YAML file, we see some general purpose usage. And here, getting the scripts down to the, the, the heat template from some Git repository, also here on our uh, repository to brought to you, and also some service-specific configuration like the port we want to uh, it, uh, we want to get to the CouchDB instance. <coughs> but that's it. No more code is needed to get a new CouchDB instance. If you want one, you get. Uh, new uh, users added, new databases added. If you get your service, uh, if you say to the Cloud Foundry instance, get me some new instance, bind me you, my app to that, your app gets an o its own database, it gets its own user on it, and you can access the data there. And if you look how e easy it is, So here you see we defined, uh, we get to, uh, a new service instance of CouchDB with t-shirt size, size plan M, and we call it test, and it's created. If we get a new CMD open for, uh, CMD open for looking in the meantime at the marketplace, <coughs> We see here we have CouchDB addressed with uh, uh, S, uh, with plans S and M, and if you look at our code, at our service definition YAML, we see here we defined CouchDB uh, here with the CouchDB S service with plan name S with some text, some definitions if we wanted to. Uh, created and uh, to deploy to Docker. And uh, if you look here down to um, OpenStack, we said, uh, to uh, size M, we said, which we used at the example right away, um, we said we want to use it um, 
with, the, with OpenStack. So we deployed, at the moment we tipped, uh, typed in the create service, a new instance to OpenStack, which where is installed, the CouchDB installation, and we have to wait until the, the instance goes up. There is in the, uh, it's an asynchronous service we are binding here for someone who is also getting a little bit into the service broker API, uh, which means the service broker starts the deployment and uh, waits for it to end. So we, it's going to look after the installation, installed instance if the service is already there and afterwards telling the Cloud Foundry um, if, it's, uh, if the service is up. If you look back here, we can see CF services, our started services, and uh, we've seen, ah, didn't get up the CF push, for I forgot to push the application. <coughs> ah, that's the problem with live coding sessions. Excuse myself. So what's also there, we have uh, the, uh, the service brokers are applications with uh, Spring Boot applications, so we can easily deploy them as uh, applications to the uh, Cloud Foundry installation. So I've pushed uh, at the moment my installation up there, and if we look back at the code, we see there's a manifest file in there saying under which name it's uh, deployed there down up above <coughs> with which uh, Spring profile. So we can switch the, the uh, configuration from uh, deployment to deployment. <coughs> um, so. If we. Uh, if you want to join the coding, you can use the, w uh, the code we presented here on, the CF, uh, on our CF Summit um, repository. Uh, at the slash um, uh, GitHub rep uh, organization, you can also get our other service brokers like um, MongoDB, Postgres, Redis, RabbitMQ, or something. Also with the core parts, the deployment, uh, uh, repository uh, parts and so on. So, which additional additional features have we back there? We have remote control of the HA proxy for getting you access to your databases out of the Cloud Foundry installation, with a little bit uh, of an uh, extra um, project, which is uh, call, which I call HA proxy backend and HA proxy agent. We have implemented the logic for the routing services. We, uh, we have additional features for um, deploying also database clusters, not only one single instance, but uh, deploying, for example, uh, several uh, uh, fully grown MongoDB cluster with uh, query servers, with replica sets, and so on. <coughs> and with existing uh, service brokers, LogSearch, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, Mar MariaDB, PostgreSQL, and so on, cloud configuration, service discovery, um, from the sp uh, Spring Boot Cloud, uh, Spring Clouds things, and I th think we're back here, so we can create this service instance. Um, so I would th uh, would say we uh, we start with a uh, question round and wait for the service to come up, so I can present to you the installed uh, DB and uh, interface. Are there any questions left? For sure, if you see here, green button, if you're f um, interested in, the, in service broker development, you can come up to me at the whole conference, contact data, my colleague, if you don't find me, my colleague uh, Alex is here. He knows where, I s um, at the uh, where I'm on the at the moment of each time of the conference. Afterwards, you can email me, get uh, contact us on GitHub, 
So free for your questions. Unfortunately, I, if, like I said, we had only 30 minutes and wanted to do a deep dive into the code and had to change because we were said you have only 30 minutes. Yes. Uh, that's uh, the framework is in production use, so it's it's major. The versioning was uh, because of we uh, we changing the the structure of the uh, open source GitHub, and uh, the because we changed also the the Maven dependencies and redesigned which parts are uh, core functionalities and which are not. The the open source version is actually in uh, 0.1 RC <coughs> because we want to get uh, uh, ready that it's stable. So um, it's only because we, we d we've, we've done the, the changes uh, two weeks ago and aren't finished yet because it, we do it uh, not full-time uh, programming but in part-time of our working time at the company. So it's only, that's the only reason it's, it's uh, 0.1. Because uh, the new structure you've seen on the on the graphics is a little bit uh, different, and we want to get uh, that straight. We are here for the one to zero version of the new structure in about two weeks or so. But a good good point. Yes. Mm, you have, um, that depends. So um, you have to see the, 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 the service broker itself, it's a Spring Boot application, you can deploy it to where you want, also to, to Cloud Foundry. The, um, the service you want to implement, it depends. Maybe your, your service is not an instance itself, so it's maybe uh, some kind of abstract thing, like uh, you have an, uh, an Jenkins server and you want uh, a uh, service instance is like a new project on the Jenkins server. And binding a service means that it's uh, somehow uh, added to the Jenkins. So you need to change some things of the, of, of the connection. If you see here, we've, um, we've made this, the structure for that purpose. So you can here make some logic deploying, uh, uh, accessing the, the existing uh, uh, Jenkins server, for example, and here adding a new platform service which orchestrates these things. And here you're doing s things like uh, adding new stages or something, or adding this as a service in the in the Jenkins pipeline or whatever you want. So it's made so uh, this the blue parts are uh, getting the concepts of the the Cloud Foundry side of the Service Broker API, and the red ones are for change, which can be, be uh, changed. We only uh, developed OpenStack, Docker, and Redis for the moment, but that's not the, the thing we want to go to. It's only part of the work done, so. And happy for contributions, new forking, new project, adding new projects. At the, the CF service broker uh, GitHub repository, we want to try to get something like an inventory of existing projects. So if you have your own one, by forking our code, tell us. We st uh, put the link on it. And so that's the one of the main reasons we changed the, the structure. To have not all code on one repository, but divided. So we have for each of the, the custom service brokers, for example, one, uh, one single <coughs> repository with a new uh, setup. So I think we waited long enough to see. CF bind service. So we have no app here in the space, so I use the service broker itself and bind it to our test uh, uh, database. And we, if we go to the... Yeah, 
there it is. Our new database, and if you see here, it's the binding ID of the service instance binding. And if you go to the users list, <coughs> we see the new user with the same ID. Any questions? Um, programming this, I started last Friday. So you see it's not much easy, to, uh, not much time to, you, uh, you need to implement a new service broker with this. Um, unfortunately, the, it's a Spring Boot application which uses Java, so yeah, it's a Java framework. <coughs> but you can, uh, looking at the code, it's open source, you, so you can easily adapt the code to, uh, to other languages, for example. So what were the key, ch key challenges that you overcame with the service broker API? Yeah. And why, apart from providing a... Mm -hmm. a yeah, G very good question. If we if we look back here, <coughs> um, can show it on this one. Very easy. Um, you have, or maybe that's more interesting. Um, you have several different um, API endpoints to implement. Uh, with several parameters which can be added, exchanged for the different kinds of services. So it uh, easily gets a little bit uh, frustrating to get all the things into it. And, um, and the, the, uh, it is a little bit um, problematic to, to uh, adapt the code from one service broker to another if it's too hardly coupled to the uh, original code. So if you want to uh, uh, de uh, develop uh, several service brokers, you have to g get an, uh, an interface to it. You have, because the, the, the API to the Cloud Foundry system isn't changing. If it's a service broker for CouchDB, if it's a service broker for some other uh, custom service, like a PostgreSQL or whatever. So only the, the information in the parameters change, and maybe a list of custom parameters is added to the metadata of the of the uh, of the uh, Java file uh, of the JSON file sent uh, from Cloud Foundry to uh, you, and um, that's the part. So um, another challenge was to um, get here things done like um, if you have several wanted to have several service brokers at the same time, which are. Uh, 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 which are also uh, failbacks of themselves. So you have, um, you have to maintenance a state in some external database, but uh, remain here. And if it comes uh, into challenge with, a, with the asynchronous um, service instances, so you have deploy service, you have only not, uh, not 60 seconds, but longer time, and you want to follow up the, the maintenance, uh, the, the, the progress, you have to, to get into a chief that it um, may change over time so you can uh, have the problems of uh, the job is created, the service broker crashes, another service broker comes up and has to get the, the same, uh, the same uh, status up and so on. So it's the maintenance cycles you have in, in, in production uh, systems. And also to uh, to adapt from different uh, deployment systems to one single point of, of code. So, it's, so you don't depend on where, to, where gets the, the, the service to <coughs> at this part of the code, but only it's there, and this handles the rest. Other questions? Okay. Or? Okay. Then thank you. <laughs> if you want to contact us, here are the informations. Or see you in, on the rest of the summit. <laughs>